Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Mark with Waist Deep Wade Fishing, Southwest Florida. Just want to say hello to everyone out there in good old YouTube land. Got another great video in store for you today. Very, very interesting. Um, it is made for the inshore fishermen. So uh, anyone who likes to catch snook, redfish, and trout, tune in. It's going to be very, very educational for you. But before we go ahead and do that, I do want to thank everyone again for subscribing, tuning in, <clears throat> um, you know, the comments, uh, the shares, the likes, um, and the views, and everything that goes with it. Uh, my heart goes out to you. Thank you very much for supporting the channel and uh, keeping this uh, the waist deep wade fishing family uh, growing by the day. So today I want to get into a subject that uh, everyone talks about, you know, and everyone says, oh yeah, you know, I've done it, and, and I've done it, and there's been days I've tried to do it, and I can't do it. So today we're going to talk about how to consistently catch inshore slams on artificials. No bait. Strictly artificial. That means you need to catch a keeper snook, a keeper trout, and a keeper redfish, all within the slot sizes, all within one day of fishing. So that's going to be our subject today. And um, there's going to be a lot of questions, and I'm going to have a lot of answers. So I'm going to jump into it, get right to the point, you know, and get into how to successfully uh, accomplish this task. Number one, number one, and, and, and it, master the f a few lures that you have confidence in, okay? The ones that you know that will trigger more strikes than all the others in your box, stop going out and wasting hundreds of dollars on buying this bait and that bait and this bait and that bait. Find the baits that work for you the ones that you have confidence in and master them on most days three to five lures okay you know will do the trick you know three to five that's all you really need you know to, to get your slam now spending hundreds upon thousands of dollars on lures is not necessary it's fun I love going out there and buying lures especially if they're all shiny shiny and you know, sparkly and purple, and 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 they just jump out at you. Of course, you want to buy them. They look cool. All right. You know, that's that's what the lures are made for. To not, they're not not all lures are made to catch fish. Okay. Most of them are made to catch fishermen, and it's the truth. So, what you want to do is you want to bring one to three top waters that you know perform consistently. My three has to be the the uh, mirror the the mirror lure um, she dog, the um, Heden Spook Junior, and then of course you know you've got to throw the Rapala skit the Rapala uh, Rapala Rapala whatever you want to call it the Skitter V. Those are my three go tos. Now, colors will range, okay, you know, I will give you that, but they are top waters, and for the most part, you know, if the fish is looking up 90% of the time, the bottom of the bait fish is, you know, when they're looking up, the, the bottom of the fish they're looking at is white, so you know, you can figure it out. Um, now, with that being said, you also want to bring one to three subsurface lures with you that you could work in the middle middle, middle column. Jerk baits, you know, hard plastic jerk baits, um, diving plugs that will dive, you know, one to, to 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 three feet on the surface. If you're working five to six, five to eight feet of water, get a plug that can work from one to three foot. Um, you know, look in the water, trying to match the hatch, you know, green and white, all white, bone. Um, the electric chicken color has been fantastic over the last couple of years for me. And that's like with that, that, that pinkish and a chartreuse. Um, 
the the Rapala X wrap and, and the pink and chartreuse, they're hard to find. But if you can find one, they're fantastic. Uh, oh, and by the way, I'm not getting paid by any of these um, lure uh, lure companies that I throw out there. This is just common knowledge that I'm giving to the public. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. These are just the lures that work. So the next set you want to cover. So you've got the top. You've got the you know you've got the middle column. Um, you also want to have soft plastics. Now, I'm kind of a soft plastic junkie. I've got all kinds, all kinds of colors. I've tried them all, spent hundreds of dollars. <clears throat> but I have three, three colors that I know consistently catch fish. And that is going to be the Chicken on the Chain by the Saltwater Assassin. And that's basically a green top with a white bottom with a black pe pepper flake with a little bit of silver shear in it with a chartreuse boot tail that's the first one the next one um is fan is another one and it's a redfish favorite and that would be the gold with the black doa cow shad um another fantastic bait i usually throw it on a chartreuse jig head or a red jig head quarter ounce phenomenal um, and then on the last one, you know, I've really started getting into different shades of purple. I've, I've noticed that the purple beats, you know, the dark purples, the, 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 the dark blacks with the chartreuse tail, um, on those, on those summer days when it's, you know, it's, you know, it's raining every day in Florida and that muddy, that, that water's all mucked up and it's muddy and it's, you know, not that wintertime gin clear those colors really exceed everyone else that's a black with a chartreuse tail or a purple with a chartreuse tail or the mardi gras color which is like a purple and a chartreuse with a chartreuse tail um be creative you know find the ones that you're proficient at those sets of lures that i just spoke about i can throw them in any direction as far as i need to throw them and i can put them exactly where i need to put them against a, a shoreline, against the mangroves, against blown down trees, you know, in a pothole 20 yards from where I'm standing. You know, I'm, I'm, I've mastered those lures. And that's why every time I go out, I catch fish. I rarely come home with a goose egg. So the next issue we we want to discuss is you you need to in order to get this slam <clears throat> there's certain criteria and it the ones we're about to talk about are very important. I speak about it all the time in my videos. Follow the mullet. Okay? Follow the mullet. I can't stress it more. Fish the potholes. Look for that moving water. Try to work from the, the, the low tide coming in if you can. And if you can't get there on that dead low, you know, go to your charts and find out when that water is going to be moving it, um, the most for the day. Look for blown down trees. Look for cuts, deeper cuts against those mangroves deeper cuts up on the sandbars okay and of course the most important points when you're out there wade fishing in and in, in you're covering ground if you see any type of point in the distance that you can get to work those points if you're on a kayak it's a lot easier if you're on a boat it's even easier than than the kayak but if you're on foot again do your research Go on Google Maps, look around, find those different types of structure. You're not going to need a boat to get out there. You know, if you can find access to that area and get in the water, okay, and it's not too deep, 
there you go. You, you just found yourself a new wade fishing spot. Now, in the warmer months, like we're going into right now, okay, you're going to be looking for cooler water. And that's going to give you another advantage, okay? When that water is hot, all the fish are going to be looking for a cooler spot. So what does that mean? That means get up early and get out early in the morning. Okay, look for wind-blown points and shores, okay? They're going to be, you know, anywhere from 2 to 5 degrees cooler than the wind-protected areas. If you're out there and you see a spot that no wind is getting to and it's just the water stagnant, that sun is beating it, stay away from it. Stay away from it. It's just going to be too hot. The fish are not going to be there. Okay, they're going to be in a cooler area where they don't have to use so much energy. The next practice I want you to really, really, you know, take this into consideration. Making long, accurate casts. Practice with those favorite lures so when it counts, okay, you're ready. You see, you happen to see a trout. 25, yard, 25 yards from you, you got your polarized, gla polarized glasses on, you see a pothole, you see a trout swimming across that pothole, you want to be able to put that lure, you know, in front of that in front of that trout's face, you know, if he's going this way, you want to be able to put it right here, so as he's, cro you know, coming towards you, that lure is working towards him, and boom, he's going to attack it, so go out there, go in your yard, and go down to the beach when it's not so windy, you know, find spots in the water, or even on shore or bush, whatever you can find, and take a lure, an old junky lure, okay? Start practicing. See how many times you can hit that spot with that lure. Do that till you can do it almost every time you throw. And that, okay, is gonna give you an advantage over everyone else because lure placement is a key factor in being able to get that redfish, that trout, and that snook all in one day. scent okay I use scents for the fish I'm targeting so for example if I'm going out for a redfish if that's what I'm looking for first thing in the morning I'm going out there okay I'm gonna throw whatever lure that I decided that I feel comfortable with that I'm proficient with okay okay and I'm gonna use a crab scent okay a shrimp scent because redfish are crustacean eaters so you're gonna want to use something, okay, that smells like what they eat. Procure is a great brand. There's tons of them out there. There's Gulp, there's this, there's that. I like Procure. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by them. I use it. It works. It definitely helps me catch more fish, period. Now, if you're using, if, if you're, you know, you've got your redfish and now you're shooting for your snook, okay, I use mullet pinfish or ladyfish scents on any one of my lures that I'm that I'm going to particularly put that I'm going to put out to try to catch the snook now if I'm going for sea trout okay I'm going to be using a shrimp scent a scaled sardine scent or a mullet scent they all work I've seen the results I've got the pictures I've got the proof so and Last but not least, keep track of the trends of where you caught these specific fish. Okay, you caught the snook here, you caught the trout there, you caught the redfish over here. Keep a log of it, okay? If you consistently keep a log of these spots, then you'll know that you can go back there on those specific times with the same conditions, and they're going to be there, okay? That's all I got for, for you guys today. My name is Mark. Again, this, was, this is Waist Deep 
Wade Fishing Southwest Florida. I love you all. Thank you very, very much for all of the kind words and the subscriptions and, and um, the shares. So if you like what you hear, like what you see, please hit the subscribe button on the bottom. Tell a friend. Share these videos with them. Go out there. Get on those flats. Make sure you go ahead and catch yourself a yellow mouth. Till the next video. See ya.